So I just did a 10 hour ride with the new Coros Dura. Did a big ride up into Rocky Mountain National Park and battery life on this Coros Dura went down 6%. That's bonkers, you know, 10 and a half hours moving time with a route uh, engaged most of the time, power meter connected, heart rate connected. That's bananas, guys. Not everything is perfect about this Coros Dura, for sure. There's some features that aren't yet fully there or half-baked or carryover from Run, which is uh, Coros's background. There are some things that are super cool. I've just experienced this a little bit, but let's rewind to the start of the day and I'll tell the story of what I've experienced with this new Coros Dura. The new Coros Dura is half the price with more than twice the battery life of solar powered Garmin Edge bike computers. Coros is a running watch company. This is their first foray into bike computers. Some features at first blush are cool. Some features are not yet fully baked. Like the app is you know, very much a running centric thing. I'm testing this guy today on a beautiful adventure type ride up here in Rocky Mountain National Park the start of Old Fall River Road, a spectacular nine mile climb up to the tippity top of the world, or at least the top of Rocky Mountain National Park. This road tops out uh, on gravel at over 11,000 feet, and then the pavement on Trail Ridge is over 12,000 feet, the highest paved road in the American National Park system. I'm gonna try this out and talk about some features of this, how it compares to Garmin, how it compares to Wahoo computers, how it compares to uh, another you know, very cheap you know, IG computer. This is quite simple. Is it too simple? We'll, we shall see. There's a little rolly wheel on here that you can also press to pause it like this. Uh, and there's also a singular button. We are awash in data these days. Uh, there's plenty, seemingly plenty of fields to choose from. It's missing a few things. Uh, but at first blush, again, the thing I've noticed it's most missing is you know, on the, the app side, the digital side. I met up with some friends down in Boulder. The ride's about 110 miles or so, 10,000 feet of climbing. Most of it's paved. This old fall is gravel. I'm on an all road bike, BMC's new road machine. Looks good and racy, a little bit more upright. I already flat it once. I neglected to set these guys up tubeless and Murphy's Law kicked in, so had a flat. Hopefully that's the one of the day. Enough yapping. Let's go enjoy the ride up Old Fall River Road. Starting elevation of Old Fall, 8,600 feet. We've already done 5,000. We've got a ways to go. First few years doing this, I'd be on a road bike with standard gearing, you know, like a 53 crank, 23, maybe 25. Now I'm on compact 50, 34 with a big old 30 cassette. And after riding gravel bikes for a few years, it still feels like a big gear. I could go lower. Maybe the road's getting steeper as I get older. One of them's happening. Computer likes to beep at you, and if there's a way to turn that off, I have not yet found it. That's the downside to trying to make a computer very simple with just two buttons. <laughs> if people like hmm, me are unfamiliar with the engineer's thinking, you're like, where, where are all these settings at? Not a bad view, eh? There are many fantastic things about this route. One is if you catch it at the right time, it's close to cars. So it's just pedestrians and cyclists for nine miles all the way up. And then you can take it back down. Normally it's a one way road. So when there are cars on it, riding back down would be a terrible idea. But on a day like today, you can hang out, take photos, make YouTube videos, enjoy the day. Sweet switchbacks down there. Zero cars, all the endorphins. And, for the moment at least, no precipitation, although these clouds might have other ideas about it. The man, Woo! the myth, yeah. 
the yoni. Finally here. Nice work. Awesome. All right, all right. <laughs> you said, is that one of the hardest climbs he's done in a long time? Yes. One thing I noticed on the map is you can move around by, you know, like the way you would on your phone. It's not quite as smooth as a phone, but being able to pivot is something I very much appreciate because, you know, just zooming in, zooming out is all fine and good if you're on course, but sometimes if you go off course, you want to know what's over there, what's over there. On, you know, Wahoo, you can do that. You've got to press a bunch of buttons with the Garmin. You can switch over to the hand and, and move around. Here you can just touch and, and move. So that's that's a plus. And then just being able to you know do the toggle, zoom in, zoom out, uh, that works fine. A downside though is that since there's only the roller wheel and the button, if it's raining or snowing or you've got thick gloves on, uh, I don't know how well that would work. But uh, on a mostly sunny day, it's a neat feature. Now, moment of truth. Will the visitor center be open so we can get some snacks? We'll find out. So I've got some friends coming up down below. Heck of a place to ride a bike, Rocky Mountain National Park, especially when this Old Fall River Road is closed to cars. After you finish your ride, you get your little wrap up. The dial works pretty well for when you're sitting around. It's nice and easy. And you can also just swipe up and down. So what do we have here? See, case in point, running, running performance, 100%. <laughs> uh, I wasn't running. Aerobic scores, training focus scores. Training focus was base. Time to recovery, four days. That feels about right. Um, some stuff is very much cycling specific, like, you know, the power, your power screens, time spent in zones, battery usage. This is the star of the show, right? 13% consumption, but offset by more than a 7% solar gain. That's bananas. And now that I've been inside for a while, it's finally gone down all the way to 62%, starting at 69%. It's crazy. 10 and a half hours is the total moving time. It was a big day. What is, let's see, that was, that was hard. That was hard. <laughs> this whole guy is, you know, a solar panel, much like the Garmin Edge uh, options. Now that this is competing against on battery life, this is kicking Garmin's butt on price, it's no contest. You know, this is, you know, depending on the Garmin model for sure, uh, less than half to more than that. On features, Garmin's been at it for a while. On navigation, Garmin has been at it for a while. And while following the route, it would beep at me when we were off route, but there was no suggested solutions. Whereas Garmin, and then even now, uh, Wahoo certainly with its Roam and even with the smaller Bolt, will suggest ways to get back on the route, whereas this just showed, you know, almost like a, as the crow flies uh, dotted red line as to how to get back. So not yet a competitor to Garmin <laughs> in all the ways, in, in particular the navigation, but the battery life is just bonkers. So in terms of size, you know, this is the Roam. The screen is basically the same, but you just got on the Roam, you've got buttons, Three on the bottom, two on the sides. On here, you've got the solar panel, one single button, and then 
you know, the, the rolly dial. The rolly dial on the road is easy enough to manipulate, um, but when rattling on gravel, it was easy to go, you know, push too far or too little. And now that I'm sitting here, I can feel that there's slight indentations, um, but I couldn't tell that when riding. So that would be, you know, they just, just come out with the first version. I'm already making suggestions for the second. Having more tactile feedback to that, like click, click would be, I think, a positive thing. One thing I couldn't figure out how to do was to turn off the beeping. You know, so some of it is, whenever you get a new computer, so much just trying, trying to figure out your way around, like you're new to the neighborhood. Um, some of the settings are just run specific. They've, they, Koros and their PR folks are saying, oh, this is coming, this is coming, and we're gonna have all these updates. And that may be the case, but as a consumer, as a user, I'm about as interested in what's coming as my wife is interested in me talking about when I'm gonna refinish the deck, which has been, you know, three years that I've been talking about that now. So, so initial take in my cracked state after one long ride on this and a couple short rides with it, Battery life, phenomenal. Price, great. The interface is pretty good. Uh, it's a, a little difficult when on rough surfaces, but just being able to paw at it is a nice thing. Navigation is good when you're, when you're on the track. Uh, when you go off track, uh, this quickly pales in comparison to what Garmin and now even Wahoo can do. With the app, there's some decent connectivity features. You know, just some things that we like now, many of us you know, having, you know, when a family member or friend texts, it shows up on your computer. Um, there's that functionality. The desktop app, there are cool things coming, <laughs> uh, I'm told, but a lot of it is uh, still to be baked in. So like the analysis is using running terminology, which is fine for runners, but as a bike nerd, I want to see bike stuff and I want to see it now. So there's, there's promise there. I was unable to load workouts. I did the drop and drag and then the upload as the desktop suggested and it failed. Talked to Coros, I said, yeah, that's coming. It's going to be here any day now. This guy's an IG computer, IG 603S, 265 bucks. So definitely undercutting uh, Garmin quite a bit. Claimed battery life for this guy is 40, what is this, 45 hours? It's fine. <laughs> this is an example, I think, of a company that looks at what other companies are doing and just knocks off the features and then undercuts them on price, which is one strategy for sure. Uh, I don't see IG Sport innovating the way Garmin has, the way Wahoo has, and the way Coros has, but you know, this is the closest thing on price as far as like having all the connectivity features and, and routing and workouts and all this. Uh, not as cool as a Garmin or a Wahoo, but you know, most of the functionality is there and this is 265 bucks. So at 250, this is cheaper and battery life is just blowing everything else out of the water. I'm super curious to see what developments come in the next week and month and year with this guy because there's, there's a lot of promise. And for those folks who would appreciate a little more battery life, which is most of us, you know, like <laughs> they've targeted this at, you know, super gravel adventure rides, which is cool. Uh, Multi-day rides, you know, I can see how this would be awesome to be not having to work, you know, it's one less thing to charge. But for many folks, you know, just not having to charge a computer every day is definitely a plus. Most of my rides are not 12 hours. <laughs> uh, how much of this is impacted by good sunlight versus cloudy days? I don't know, but today was sunny for most of the day and it was rocking. Speaking of things that you need to be charged, wore the, how do I get this thing off? Wore the heart rate strap. I'm in general a fan of this style versus the chest strap. I just don't like wearing a chest strap. I don't really like wearing anything on my body. I'm not a watch guy or a band person. Um, but this is the, less, uh, the least obtrusive of the options. They're not the first to offer this arm style by any means. Wahoo has something similar. A downside to this guy is it's one more different charger to keep track of. This has got a little magnetic clip, which is pretty minimalistic and cool, but it's just like one more thing. And I get why you can't have a USB-C because you know, you're sweating and slobbering all over the thing and, and water and sweat ingress is a bad thing for electronics, but um, it's still less obtrusive than heart rate strap. 
Another thing with this, you don't really turn it off. Right now it looks like it's off, but you just press it once and it's back to life. It's more akin to a laptop or your desktop, for those of you still using those style computers, in that it just goes to sleep after moments of inactivity and then a press of either the two buttons wakes it right up. Uh, you can go into the menus, dig in there and switch the thing off, but they recommend you just leave it on. That's a definite difference to a Garmin or a Wahoo that takes a while to boot up. Not that that's a big deal, but sometimes when time is of the essence, yeah, <laughs> that could be a positive. World's Dura, it's a pretty good start for the first bike computer from this running watch company. Yes, there's room for improvement, certainly on the app side, on the workouts, but the battery life, phenomenal. The interface, pretty good. The scrolly wheel is a novel addition to the bike space. I'm curious to see where these guys go in the future. And yes, you should come to Colorado and ride Old Fall River Road, especially if you can get up there before it's open to cars. Just make sure you start early and go with some buddies because you know that will help you to enjoy the ride. Postscript, I cracked today like I have not cracked in a long time. So shout out to Tess for saving me with gummy worms and Pablo with caffeinated gel and the rest of my mates for waiting for my slow carcass as I lumbered home. Whew, that was a big day.